it is best to try to avoid leaving evidence on attacked systems, systems that you're compromising, that you're leveraging, desktop systems, server systems, and so forth. But it's mostly a difficult task because you're doing a lot of work there. You're actually doing a lot of your intrusion there, compromising it in a few different ways, possibly going out to the web, downloading tools, running FTP, uh, running a few different apps and so forth. So generally speaking, if you can avoid leaving evidence on an attack system, that's great. But plan on cleaning up that system when you're done, getting rid of as much evidence as possible. And in fact, this fourth bullet here, cleaning up malware software, that might seem a little odd. But what you're trying to do here is if you can infect a number of machines with malware, whatever kind it is, and then get rid of it from this one machine, it may get reinfected, it may get uh, reattacked by that malware if it's a self-spreading malware, but that's fine. It looks more organic that way rather than being able to trace all of this malware back to a single system or a single context, security context on that system. The goal of erasing evidence on the system certainly is to leave it the way you found it. Do not change the system as much as possible. And I'm going to show you an example of that right now. So we've switched over to Windows XP Service Pack 3. And what I'd like to show you is a few common ways to erase tracks. But first of all, the easiest way that I find to avoid leaving tracks in the first place. Instead of clicking on Start and then browsing through all programs and starting to look up apps this way, I find the best way to do this is actually to do a start run of command and then launch everything from here. Actually do start space notepad if I want to run notepad or start iExplorer if I want to start anything like that. What that does is it actually avoids putting those icons on the start menu in the first place. So again, minimizing my tracks. Maybe this user doesn't use Notepad very often. So if they see Notepad running very frequently, that's going to be a problem. But obviously, putting command prompt here, it's not as obvious as some of the other stuff that we could do, but it is something we want to avoid. I, I definitely want command prompt off that menu. So what I'll typically do here is right click this, choose properties, click on customize. I'll go ahead and clear that most recently used list on the start menu. That will help get rid of a bunch of that stuff uh, that gets launched. And that's fine. That's part of it. But much, much more common is something, uh, a couple of different aspects. First of all, getting rid of events in the event log. The easiest way to do that will be to actually run MMC and add in the event viewer snap in. Adding in the event viewer snap in that focuses on this machine will let us see all of the events on the machine. So all of this stuff here, it all has to go. Right click and clear all events. Great. I don't want to save it because I don't really need that evidence. So I'll go ahead and go through all of these clear everything out. It's not uncommon that either users will do it or the system will do it or an administrator simply won't think to look. It's not going to set off a whole lot of alarms if there's all the events are purged off this system. That's great. So that's one more step in clearing all of these uh, potential pieces of evidence out. The next piece I typically do, because most of us use the web at some point during an attack, and if you take a look here, I've actually used Internet Explorer to start going out to websites, maybe download some apps or some tools or just compromise it in general, maybe report something back. I want to get rid of Internet history. And that's a relatively well understood and well known technique for Internet Explorer, for Firefox, for Chrome, for Opera, whatever. However, the worst place to do it is in Internet Explorer itself. I really strongly recommend that if you're going to purge internet history, you come into control panel first and then fire up internet options and actually go clear all of this stuff out. Delete all of these, get rid of all of it, 
as well as before you begin the attack, bring this number all the way down. The lowest in this particular operating system is eight megabytes of cache because that's the least amount of footprint you're going to potentially leave. Bring this number all the way down so that it doesn't save history. You're still going to need to purge it out. However, this minimizes maybe forgetting. If you forget, it minimizes the impact of what an administrator might find or a security analyst might find when they come take a look at this. In addition, you want to take a look at one other piece of setting here. You want to come over to the content tab and you want to click on autocomplete settings and you want to clear out all of the autocomplete history as well. That'll help quite a bit. It in some versions of the browser, that'll actually get taken care of when you delete the rest of the stuff, but you want to manually purge it all here. Getting rid of all of that is awesome. It's not as good as using something like the onion routing to ensure that you don't leave footprints in the first place, but certainly purging it out once it's here is super, super helpful.